So we'll see if that works in Washington. I know. Well, this month, the current recovery celebrates its fourth anniversary, and now is a good time to assess how the U.S. economy is performing. Unfortunately for American families, the current recovery remains the weakest since World War II. There's a troubling growth gap in economic performance between this recovery and the average of post-war recoveries, leaving our economy 4 million private sector jobs short and $1.2 trillion missing from the economy. While Wall Street is booming, every man, woman, and child in America is missing nearly $3,000 in real disposable income due to the growth gap. During this Congress, the Joint Economic Committee has been examining the causes of the growth gap and the types of alternative policies to close that gap. The Joint Economic Committee has studied how current fiscal and monetary policies have held back this recovery. Today, the JEC will explore regulatory policy. From town hall meetings with my constituents in Texas to conversations with business leaders and economists across America, there is one consistent message. Uncertainty over the cost of new regulations in health care, the environment, labor issues, and financial services is suppressing business investment and the creation of new jobs along Main Street. The burden of fe federal regulations is large. At year-end 2012, the Code of Federal Regulations had 238 volumes and 174,000 pages. That burden is growing. In 2012, the Federal Register, which publishes proposed new rules and regulations, final rules, and changes to existing regulations, totaled 78,961 pages. Three of the four highest page counts since the Federal Register began publication have occurred during the current presidency. And that burden is costly. NARA Economic Consulting, in a study last year commissioned by Manufacturers Alliance for Productivity and Innovation, estimates the current direct cost of compliance with major regulation, that is, those with an estimated cost greater than $100 million a year, issued between 1993 and 2011 to be between $265 billion and $726 billion every year. Clyde Wayne Cruz, the Competitive Enterprise Institute, estimates the total cost of regulation in America approaches $1.8 trillion annually, or nearly 12 percent of our nation's economy. Given this historically weak recovery, the rise of technology to help us meet regulatory goals more cheaply, and its shared belief that America should continue progress on a clean environment and safe workplace, when regulations are necessary, doesn't the public deserve the most effective regulation at the least cost? Smart regulations that improve the market process and its incentive structure to accelerate progress rather than dictate particular outcomes will prove superior to tens of thousands of pages of mandated rules and micromanaged instructions. Devising process-enhancing rules that engage the private sector's versatility and creativity require objective, upfront analysis and thoughtful design. Yet federal agencies often do things the other way around, deciding first what they want to do and then using whatever analysis is performed to justify their preconceived solution. This abuse must stop. In 1981, President Reagan issued an executive order requiring executive branch agencies to conduct regulatory impact analysis, commonly known as cost-benefit analysis, before issuing major new regulations. This first step towards smarter regulation had its limitations. An executive order affects only executive branch regulatory agencies and therefore doesn't affect independent regulatory agencies such as the Consumer Product Safety Commission, the Federal Trade Commission, the Federal Reserve, and the Consumer Financial Protection Board. Over the years, Congress has exempted broad swaths of federal regulation from the scrutiny of cost-benefit analysis through provisions of the Clean Air Act, for example. While there are government-wide best practice standards on how agencies sh should conduct cost-benefit analysis, they are not uniformly applied and are not legally binding. So the quality of agency cost-benefit analysis varies greatly. Agency bureaucrats, as you would imagine, are naturally biased toward their proposed regulation and have learned how to manipulate cost-benefit analysis to justify whatever new regulations they wish to, wish to issue. For example, former Administrator of the Office of Information and Regulatory Affairs, Professor John Graham, closely examined CAFE, the Corporate Average Fuel Economy Standards for Trucks, in his testimony before the House. 
Committee on Oversight and Government Reform in September 2011 and found that to inflate the benefits in their new rule, regulators had cut the discount rate and the so-called rebound effect of increased driving with better mileage to half or less. He also found that they failed to carefully consider the rule's effects on vehicle size, performance, and safety. In other words, today too few proposed rules are fully analyzed. There are too many loopholes, no uniform requirement across all agency, a lack of standards with which to conduct the analysis, no check and balance against agency bias, no comparison of past analysis to real life impacts, and little recognition of the total burden on the economy of regulations. We must do better. The purpose of this hearing is to discover ways in which Congress can make the regulatory process smarter, more cost effective, and better designed to accomplish the goals without damaging the economy. In particular, the committee hopes to hear from today's witnesses about the deficiencies in cost benefit analysis as it is now practiced and how agencies can do a better job of quantifying and measuring the costs and the benefits of both proposed and existing regulations. I look forward to the testimonies and I recognize our Vice Chair, Senator Klobuchar, for her opening remarks. Well, thank you very much, Mr.